afternoon, everyone. I'm Go Local Live correspondent Chelsea Gay here in the Navigant Credit Union Broadcast Center. On this beautiful 80 degree Wednesday, we're here to talk about all things cool in Rhode Island and some awesome events we have coming up this week and uh, for the rest of October. So our first guest is Eric Auger from 1031 and uh, the, for the first time ever, a gargoyle here in the studio, a real live gargoyle. So um, we're going to talk to them both a little bit about uh, 1031 and, and what's coming up in October for Absolutely. the company. So we're really excited to have you guys on the show. Thanks for joining us. We are happy to be here. <laughs> so Eric, tell us a little bit about 1031 and what it is. I'm sure our viewers have seen the likes of uh, this gargoyle here walking around Waterfire in Providence. Of course, the world's <laughs> famous Waterfire gargoyle. Yes, of course. Yes. I'm sure they've been creeped out by, by a gargoyle once or twice. <laughs> yes, we have been in existence for 18 years. Um, 1031 stands for Halloween, the date, October 31st, of course. There we go. And uh, we have the luxury and the privilege of making pretend and pretending it's Halloween every single day, traveling not only um, around the country, but around the world, um, performing as different kinds of characters, entertaining people at parties and celebrations. And so I've heard you guys explain as living art. And yes. so, and that makes perfect sense for what it is you do, but give us some other examples of, of the characters that you create and where they may be seen around the country, not sure. just Rhode Island. Yeah, sure, of course. We basically have three different categories of characters. We have our human statues, which the gargoyle is part of. Um, <laughs> we also have human nature, which is a whole series of people based, um, their costumes are based on nature and plants, such as trees and flowers and things like that. And then we have our live action category, which basically takes everything else, including the kitchen sink, and throws it in all together. We have everything from um, literary and movie classics, from like Alice in Wonderland, Wizard of Oz, to um, fantastical original creations. Awesome. And uh, that's basically what our collection consists of. Okay, and so you guys have sort of grown up in the Providence and Pawtucket scene and mm -hmm. more recently started Revel Factory, mm -hmm. um, which is your nonprofit organization. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about how that came to be and what that is and how it relates to 1031. Sure thing. Um, over the years, a lot of people have come up to us, a lot of like schools and other nonprofit organizations, and they're like, could you? Um, help us out with workshops and teach classes and inspire the kids in the classes and stuff like that. And for many years, we um, definitely wanted to do that because we love inspiring the youth of today uh, into becoming artists and performers. And it, we found that sometimes it was a little bit difficult with our business model because we are a legitimate business and we are very busy. And taking the time to do that sometimes was hard. And we wanted to compensate the people that did it. And it was just a little bit difficult. So by forming our nonprofit, uh, we now have a few fundraisers throughout the year, and with the funding that we get from that, we now are able to offer free um, nonprofit educational programs and different workshops to different schools and to the community um, at, at little cost or sometimes even no cost. Great. So speaking of events that you guys put on for mm -hmm. fundraising, you have a really cool one coming up in October mm -hmm. called Underland, yes, yes. which sounds delightfully creepy. Yes, it's amazing. <laughs> Underland is basically a twisted take on the classic Alice in Wonderland. It will be performed at our event space, which is 249 Roosevelt Avenue in Pawtucket. Um, it is co-sponsored by 1031 and our nonprofit, Rebel Factory. And um, tickets can be available at eventbrite.com. And what makes Underland particularly different for the Halloween season is that a lot of the times you can go everywhere and go into a haunted house. You get in line, the doors open, you walk through the maze and then you walk out the other end. Yep. Well, this is something completely different. We've created an original story, original soundtrack, and taken our classic and probably well-known uh, Alice in Wonderland costumes and tweaked them up a little bit so they're a little bit creepy in this okay. presentation. And guests are allowed to meander and wander around at their own pace. Um, this is not a linear uh, type of experience. It is a true on theatrical immersive experience. Okay, so it's immersive in that you're able to, in, you're in, interacting, you're talking, you're you know, I don't know about touching, but you're <laughs> <laughs> no, touching. no touching. Yeah. Um, and so is it small groups are going in and interacting at once, or how does it work yeah. in terms of the flow of yeah. the event? So how that works is we are having shows every half hour, um, and we allow 50 people to go in at a time. And it's basically Thursday, Fridays, and Saturdays um, from October uh, 18th through the 27th. 
And again, the best thing is that if, if you're a type, the type of person that is too afraid to go to a haunted house or something like that, this is perfect for you because it can be as um, voyeuristic or as engaging as you would like it to be. Okay. And so for the design and the creation of this experience, are you working with schools as part of Rebel Factory to create these sets? You're very intuitive in that question. <laughs> yes, that's absolutely right. Great. So um, for this particular version of our haunt, haunted experience this year, we worked with um, the Jacqueline Walsh School of the Performing Arts. And we went in throughout the year and taught a class on event uh, production and design. Okay. And we really kind of let the students' minds run free and help us to create the, it was really the genesis of the whole idea, the theme, then the story, the characters, the, uh, the locations and the set design that we're creating. And then also they came in uh, before they graduated last May and worked in our shop and actually helped us to make some props like bleeding hearts and severed heads and you oh. know, all the good things. Oh, giving us a little preview. Yes, of course. So, you know, speaking of this charitable arm and involving the schools, what are you hoping that Rebel Factory, the impact, I know you guys have really only been around now for a couple of years, I yes, think? Yes, Rebel Factory, yes. So, for Rebel Factory, yes. Yeah. Not 1031, you guys have been here forever. Forever! <laughs> So what are you hoping the impact is on the community of Pawtucket and, you know, overall Rhode Island? Yeah. What are you hoping people get from? I mean, throughout 1031's entire existence, we've just been very open you know, to the universe as far as uh, what has been offered to us. And it just so happened with the location that we're at now, we have an event space. Um, so now we have the space, and <laughs> as our popularity grows, it's also bringing in an influx of different kind of individuals that are also teachers and dancers, choreographers, artists, all that, those sorts of things. So okay. it's just been great that we can offer our space as a hub for the performing and the creative arts. And um, we really don't have any goal per se. It's just that we're opening the doors and people are starting to come in. So that's, all, that's really what we can wish for and hope for. And so besides of, you know, events like Underland, what on a weekly, monthly basis is happening at the Rebel Factory? Are, are artists in there you know, working on different pieces, mm -hmm. just their own pieces? Or is it you guys are holding workshops? What's happening over there? All of that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Everything. We're, we're, well, uh, 1031 has uh, Metamorphosis Dance Company, um, which uh, obviously rehearses there weekly. Uh, we also have the good for fortune of having Burbage Theater Company do their entire season. Um, in our space. Oh, great. Um, okay. So their season runs from uh, September until May uh, with four to five shows throughout their whole season. And then when we have openings available, um, it's, it's interesting. Things have been happening. We've had some, um, some tap dance groups. We've had some, a lot of dance groups. Um, some other artists have shown their works there and stuff like that. So things right. just get peppered in when it's available. Okay, so now going back to 1031, take us back 18 years. Let's get we'll into the time, time machine. Time, yeah. <laughs> and, yes. uh, you know, what prompted living art? Where, where did this idea come from that you have to have a human topiary and a, <laughs> yeah. and a gargoyle statue that jumps out at Who you? Who thinks of this stuff anyway? <laughs> it's crazy. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, 18 years ago, my business partner and I, Joe Perry, um, we just, we, we had nine to five jobs and we wanted a creative outlet. So we were inspired by Water Fire and the atmosphere and the ambiance and um, living statues have been around for many, 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 many years. Of course. So we we really kind of latched onto that idea. It kind of just came to us. And the gargoyles, it was really very spontaneous. It was something that we just kind of thought, let's try it out. And basically, that's really how it happens. Yeah. And, and we're very lucky. Barnaby Evans spotted us. He loved what we were doing. Uh, he supported us 100%. And he was really the catalyst in trying to find the best spot for us to perform down um, in downtown Providence, um, which we are now at Memorial Park um, for yep. every water fire. And uh, the rest is history. Just as the years went by, we created more characters, more people saw us, more people wanted us to come to their events. People at those events saw us, they wanted to go, and so on and so on and so on, and here we are. Great. And so, you know, you said living art and living statues is something that's not new. I mean, you guys didn't reinvent, didn't create them, but how yeah. How do you guys differentiate yourselves with your living art that, you know, you guys are national, you guys get to go out to all different cool places, we'll talk about that a little bit, but yeah. what makes you different? I think what sets us apart is our professionalism and our attention to detail. Those are probably the two things. And then thirdly, if I can add a third thing, is really <laughs> the, 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 yeah, <laughs> is, is the, the spirit um, that all of our performers embody. Um, you know, we could very easily just put on a costume, go out, do the gig, get paid, walk away. but. 
you know, we're very, very selective. There's a little bit of an arduous uh, audition process that you have to audition to apply to become a performer with us. And then it's a very long time in training, several um, gigs of training, and then we put you on a small show at first, and then as you mature with us, you get more and more responsibility. Um, it's not a mandatory thing, but we do ask that everyone wears multiple hats. So as you're um, growing with the company as a performer, the doors are open for you to become a producer um, and things right. like that. So it's a combination of, of all those things. And Joe and I really identified at the very beginning that we are basically a carnival act. You know, we are part of the circus. Yeah. It's very unusual that um, what we do. Um, so we really started out at the very beginning to be the best at what we did. And it's, right. it, we've been very blessed and very fortunate because it has set us very far apart from our competitors and our competition. So what do you think has been maybe the most unique undertaking of a character? I know you probably can't answer this. I don't know. Give me, <laughs> give me like a top. The most memorables? Yeah. Um, give me a couple different things. I, I, can, I, can definitely, <laughs> I can answer that question very easily. So we had the luxury of performing in, in Beijing in China, wow. uh, which uh, was great. Actually, Shanghai in China. But we, toured, we, we extended our visit out there and toured China a little bit. Um, and that was profoundly uh, impactful and amazing for both of us because we went to a country w that we did not know the language and through our performance we spoke a universal language with our audience which was pivotal you know in in our maturity and our just gratitude you know about Great. what we do um, we performed for the Obama administration wow. um, at, at, at the United Nations conference in New York again I was performing and I was basically the step and repeat for every member of the United Nations. So after I had my photograph taken literally with every member of the United Nations, I was left with, do, do we have to impress anyone anymore? Like, it, and it was very humbling. What, you, what character were you for that experience? I was a Talamon. Just yourself? I, yes, I was with myself. <laughs> yeah, I was a, a Talamon, which is a, a Greek pillar. Oh, awesome. With a, okay. a of a headpiece. But you know, it, when, when you reach that point as an artist and as a businessman, um, you know, it, it's very humbling, but it's also very liberating because okay. you're like, wow, you know, we are doing what we're supposed to be doing and we're doing it well and we're doing it right. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and just traveling around every, every time we travel, but then also still consistently, I performed at Waterfire a few weeks ago and mm -hmm. the magic is still there oh, and yeah. the emotion is still there and the gratitude is still there. So it's like, it's very important that we still do perform at Waterfire because that's where we started and we make it somewhat mandatory that all new people at least get that experience a few times so they can really understand why we started our company. Yeah, that's amazing. And yeah. for those who may want to involve a character in some way in their upcoming events or yeah. lives, you know, just mm -hmm. to hire a character to be Absolutely. hang out with them, what's the easiest way to go about that? Do you, you list them all on your website, the yes. ones that you offer, and then are, do you actually, are you able to create characters if Absolutely. someone, you know, wanted to? If you can dream of it and think of it and want it, we can make it. There you go. Hey, yeah. there we've it is. We've never been stumped in 18 years. We've never. Really? We, yeah, we've, we've always, I mean, most of the time, you know, Joe and I talk about it. You know, if, if something is presented to us and we're like, okay, okay, we'll do it. <laughs> and, yeah. we, and we figure out, we always figure out how to do it. And you and have a lot of partnerships now with lots of organizations around Rhode Island because I, you're at almost every big event that, that I know of, you yeah. know, in yeah. some way yeah, there. Yeah, totally, yeah. We, um, you know, we have been very fortunate again, you know, to be embraced by the local community and um, we're very happily known as the Waterfire Gargoyles. Yes. Yeah. Hey, that's a, not a bad thing to be known as. But yeah. now there are statues at the Waterfire too. They yeah. hand out scrolls. Yes. Not oh, yes. just gargoyles uh, anymore. Yes, of course, of course. <laughs> Um, yeah, we have, again, we have a whole collection. Ironically, the, the, the history behind the scrolls from the, the living statues that we perform alongside of the gargoyles at Waterfire is that um, it was our way of speaking to our audience in a verbal way without actually using our voice. So, yeah. and again, all the things that you receive, whether it's a, a fortune or an oracle, and, and s the riddles aren't necessarily uplifting, <laughs> but you know, it's, it's really dark. about putting out, out the, the positivity, the energy, We've gotten emails and phone calls and letters from people that they were saying that that little piece of paper has influenced them and changed their lives, wow. you know, for the better. So again, That's it's great. like we, we are so thankful and so grateful and humbled by the fact that our performances can impact people's lives in that way. That's amazing. Yeah. And so speaking of performances, I want to take take it back to Underland because that's the most oh, yeah. exciting thing coming up yes. in October, you yes, know. And totally. you know, any viewers who have attended Mysterium, I'm sure there are plenty because it's a 
very well attended event. The Eternal each Masquerade. The Eternal Masquerade. Yes. Uh, the public library is going through construction this year. It is. Yes. So no Mysterium, but there is an no. Underland Ball. Yes. Event. So let's talk about the ball. Yes, yes, absolutely. So um, the Underland Ball is October 27th. It is from 10.31 p.m. until 1 a.m. Ah, it is see what you did there. <laughs> yes, it is in downtown Pawtucket. Um, and again, what separates this party from any other party that's happening out there is that you are going to be able to celebrate inside of our event space, which is basically the theat theatrical set for our presentation of Underland. So okay. you can take your selfie at the tea party. You can go into the Mad Hatter shop. Um, you can go into the Queen's Royal Rose Garden, et cetera. I won't say anything else. Um, <laughs> I don't want to spoil it. Um, but yeah, it's going to be really, really fun. And awesome. it's a costume ball. So we encourage everyone to dress in their best Underland best. And you may say, what is your Underland best? Not it's your underwear. No, 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 no. It's not that sort of party. <laughs> well, maybe after midnight it'll become that party. But. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so under, what is your, your best Underland costume? It's really, it can be an Alice in Wonderland costume, but twist it up a little bit and make it a little creepy. Yeah, like this. Yes. This is where the guy went. Oh, yes. And, of course, the, uh, the most important thing is that <laughs> Underland is part of Mill City Haunts, which is an amazing uh, project that we've been working on for a few years with the city of Pawtucket. And um, we presented it to the mayor a few years ago, and he was very excited about it, and it took us a few years to get going. But basically what it is is we are corralling uh, some of the other local businesses, including uh, Slater Mill and City Hall. Excellent. Uh, and we are going to be programming um, several nights of Halloween-style programming, uh, most of which is free to the public. Um, Underland and Slater Mill's attractions do have um, a fee attached to them. But uh, yeah, we're really excited. There's going to be a, um, a light show on City Hall. There's going to be uh, programming at the amphitheater with live music and free movies um, and fun for the whole family. So Mill City Haunts is happening in tandem with exactly. Underland. Yes. And oh, I wanted to ask one thing. Tickets yeah. for the ball, yep. separate from tickets to the performances? Well, funny you should ask. And yes, they are separate, but we have a limited amount of tickets, which um, include the last show of Underland, uh, which is rolled over into the Underland Ball. So from 9.30 until 10, you see the Underland performance. Then you get a special little uh, beverage or treat uh, in the holding area while we reset the space for the party and then you are the first VIPs into the party. There we go. Well. well that sounds that sounds amazing. Yeah. So let's hope our viewers check it out and Please at do. least at least attend Underland if not the ball. Hopefully yes. both. Yes. Because I know if, if anybody's seen the Alice in Wonderland characters they're pretty incredible. The Cheshire cat is Maybe you'll see him. Oh maybe just maybe just his smile. <laughs> 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 totally. Well thank you guys so much for Joining me to talk about this event on this 80 sure. degree uh, I know, I October know. day, I know. which I know this poor gargoyle is going to melt. <laughs> He's a good boy. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you, Eric. Thank you. And Gargoyle, our first gargoyle in studio. Thank you for having for us. For coming on the show. We hope you guys all check out 1031 Revel Factory and the Underland event. We'll put all the links um, in the editorial so you guys can check that out. And everybody stay tuned. We've got an exciting guest coming up next.